All right, today, today we're doing a little show and tell on my handline rigs. So these are my miniature handlines. I just make these. Um, these ones I made out of hardwood. I wouldn't recommend doing that. These here could be hardwood, but it's nice to be able to stick your hook in it. So I'm going to drill some holes on an angle. Next time I'll buy popple dowel and make these. Anyway, they're six by four or four and a half, depending on what I got. Now, I've got two set out here. So one is my standard rig and the other one is one I geared up in the boat because I lost one. So my hand lines, I will put anywhere from 50 to 100 pound test on them and I put a swivel on it. And that's it. Now, you don't need that strong of a line. The biggest thing I've ever caught on one of these is a dogfish. But the diameter of the line is, is key because if you use real thin line, it gets tangled up easy, it's hard to haul, it's hard on the hands. Bigger line is just more user friendly, so it's not for the strength. Alright, so basically I use a fish finder rig. So you can see here I've got an eye. I've got about 10 inches to a foot of line, whatever I happen to spool off. And I've got a, a little connector here. A couple beads, I got these orange things on there because I had some. Um, the beads are basically to protect the knot. Now, this one has a little plastic piece on it, but these hooks you can, or clevises, whatever you want to call them, you can put them on, like I could put this style on as well. It doesn't have to have that fish finder style eye on it. You can just run a loop on there, but the eyes are pretty much to protect your knots and stop it from going down over if you got a bigger eye. So about a foot a line is what I use. Tie a loop on one end. I put the slider on here. Add a swivel. The swivel helps with tangling but the main purpose of this swivel is to stop your hook from going down too far. Uh, if you just tied a knot in it you'd make a weak point. So then I've got about a foot of line. This one's actually a little more than a foot. It's longer than it had to be. Same thing, again, um, this is, for flounder fishing, this is where I put my weight, I put it in the middle, and then another clevis on the end. So I'll put a long shank hook like this, that little red string was, was up there originally. I'll put one top and bottom. Now if I want to change over and decide I'm going to do mackerel or something or midwater setup, I'll move this weight to the bottom. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the big advantage to this is when a fish comes along and the flounder will almost always take the bottom one When they're they're messing with it They're not coming up against that weight. So they'll less likely to spit it out and I can feel this on the boat where if it was tied right to the weight They can mess around with this quite a bit before I feel it because I got to overcome that weight before I, I can feel anything so, we did one up in the boat. It's not that I lost a gear the other day. These are new lines. The old ones weren't working out for me. Ah, it's a different story. So, basically improvised the same thing. So, in a pinch, what I did is I took an egg sinker, and that's probably 3-4 ounce. Tie a big long loop to give some distance between your hook and your... Uh, your weight it didn't have to be that big that's just what I did and I tied two knots in it for some reason don't know why and then at this end I added a hook that was already snelled on a line that's our other setup now you'll also see on my line sometimes especially if my father has it he'll use this setup or this setup he's like geez I can feel the fish this great you know they're, they're biting hard today well they're not because normally what he does is he ties a sinker solid so he's not feeling the bite. And I tell him that, but he's old and forgetful. And as soon as he has to gear up another line, he ties it solid and, geez, the fish aren't biting very hard today. But anyway, that's just my father. That's, that's him. Um, some people will say this is bulky and, you know, unnatural, whatever. I grew up with this type of setup, you know, a lot bigger than that, you know, hand lining for a bit and codfish. So this is very natural to me. We, we used to do rods. I get a rod up here and I'm going to show you what we used to do. You'll break a rod in no time in a small boat. Fish and flounder. 
because you got to choke up on the rod and or you got to get someone else to take it off for you so what we had done previously is once they are broken and I still have a bunch of eyes we cut it off here add a new big heavy duty eye on the end and you'd have like a two or three foot rod and that works pretty well but then you burn up reels so we went back to hand lines just works better I guess that's it for this video guys please like and subscribe if you've got any questions drop them down below I'll try to explain them and see you next time